Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to this talk. This is a joint work from Renmin University of China, Xiaomi Incorporation, Laie Technology, and Peking University. The talk is about multilingual COVID QA, which aims to learn with global information sharing in multiple languages for question and answering with respect to COVID-19. Look at this map. COVID-19 is perhaps the most serious public health crisis in recent decades. The infections and deaths are still climbing to the new heights. With more vaccine available, hopefully the situation will get better and our world can be healed. COVID-19 tightly connects with the global policies. The action forces include state emergency, city lockdowns, and quarantines. People are advised to keep social distances and the self-isolation is promoted. International travels are still restricted. COVID has significantly changed our daily life. Entertainment has been canceled. In-person conferences have been moved online, such as the Web Conference 2021. Public facilities have been shut down or reduced operation hours. People now can work from home. These changes are really fundamental. So, why do we choose the Web QA for COVID? Since everything has been moved online, the web is an active place for information sharing. People seek for information from news, bulletins, and search engines, and exchange information on QA forums, such as Quora or Zhihu in Chinese. The global information sharing is vital to help people to fight against the COVID. The more we know about the virus, the better we can do. The World Health Organization launched a web QA officially, with quite limited questions can be answered. We are facing with several challenges for the web QA with respect to COVID-19. The information is contained in multiple languages, and the situation is unfriendly to monolingual speakers. It is not likely to ask these monolingual users to learn a new language when they need to. Generally, the information is insufficient for a particular language, especially for a low resource one. When the speakers of these minor languages seek for more information, they will need to access to other high resource languages. Moreover, the translation is not ready for the new writing topic with new terminologies and new OOV words. Last but not the least, the information from different languages is not always aligned. If people want to know about the whole big picture, it is better to understand the information from multiple sources in multiple languages. Hence, our contribution is as follows. We collect the information from the global data and utilize the knowledge to reinforce from one language with another. We also improve the general translation models to better fit the COVID topic. We investigate the unsupervised language alignment and cross-lingual mapping in question and answers from the non-parallel data. Here are some preliminaries. We collect the questions and answers in pairs in different languages. In this paper, we collect the data in Chinese, English, and Japanese. Please note that these languages are not in parallel. We conduct pre-training for language models. We use uh, unsupervised neural translation models 
with word-to-word -word alignment, and the translation model is rather weak at this time. We build the model based on the encoder-to-decoder framework with bidirectional GRU. We illustrate the framework with the most basic model, but other structures can also apply, such as a transformer and its variants. We have the dataset in language L and language L star. The question and answers are stored as pairs. Nevertheless, there can be a subset of parallel data which indicates question in language L and answer in language L star, or vice versa. The target is to generate an answer in the same language as the question part. There will be two functions in the framework, one for question answering generation and the other one for translation. This is the big picture for the overall model framework. There are three components. Monolingual question answer generation. The machine translation part with forward and backward translation as well as the cross-lingual question and answering part. First, we we'll take a look at the translation part. We would like to restore the original question or answer after the forward and backward translation process. The loss for the translation is denoted as follows. For the monolingual question and answering, we have two parts. The first part is on conditioned on the translation function, which is the most standard question answer mapping among the QA pairs in the same language. The second part is conditioned on the translation function. The intuition is that after the forward and backward translation, the question and answers can be still mapped and aligned the monolingual QA loss is defined accordingly. The information can be shared through semantics in cross-lingual question and answering. We translate the question part in another language and then align the answers in the original language and do the same thing to the answer part. Here, if we have the true parallel data available, we can directly learn the cross-lingual mapping. The cross-lingual loss is defined as follows. We train the model with the language model pre-training and the monolingual QA pre-training, and then we fine-tune the parameters on the true parallel data and the pseudo-parallel data. The final objective is to add these components together in language pairs. We collect the QA pairs from different sources, such as FAQs, expert interviews, and web QA forms, such as Quora and Zhihu, as mentioned. We evaluate the model using Blue, which is a standard metric for machine translation and QA generation. Since Blue counts the word overlap, we also measure similarity with the ground truths as embeddings. We also include human evaluation. The judges are not experts of COVID-19. They are just ordinary users to check the answers if they are reasonable or not. We compare several baselines, including the monolingual QA, which trains the QA in a single language separately. The multitask QA is implemented in a multitasking framework. Each language is regarded as a single task. The translation aided method uses external translation models, such as Google Translate, which is a data level method. We also include the shared private memory based model question and answer generation. 
According to the results, our proposed model outperformed these baseline methods in all languages, including the Chinese and English, as well as the Japanese. Through the ablation studies, we will observe that all of our components, including the monolingual pre-training, weak translation, forward and backward translation, monolingual and cross-lingual mapping, all contribute to the overall performance. If we remove one of the components from the full model, the overall performance drop accordingly. We take a deep look through the additional analysis and examine whether the true parallel data helps. The answer is yes. Even a small number of true parallel data contributes to the overall performance. Although the, the effect is to some extent marginal, still, we believe these data have the effect of a calibration, and hence, we recommend with a further wall effort, you can create some high quality parallel data for calibration instead of using pseudo parallel data only. Our model is connected to existing models. Without the translation part, it is actually a question answering generation model. And without the QA part, it is a dual learning framework for machine translation. Okay, that is pretty much all for today's talk. Thank you so much again. If you have any further questions, please send emails to us. And thank you again.